Are you packing for a safari? Do you need help getting organized for this trip? This video is for you. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeff Heyer and I'm a safari travel advisor. I craft custom made itineraries for people all across Africa. I also create videos like this one that are meant to help people prepare for their wildlife adventures. In this video, I'm gonna be packing for a month long safari. I leave in a few days and I'm so excited, which means it's time to get packing. I'm gonna be sharing with you my full comprehensive packing list. Everything I'm bringing in my bag, I'm going to be showing you right here on camera. I'm gonna be telling you what I'm bringing and why I'm bringing it. By watching this video all the way through, you're gonna be more prepared for your safari adventure. I wanna help you get organized. I wanna to bring to your attention some things you should definitely have with you, while also helping you realize some other things you may not have considered bringing that will greatly enhance your experience. I've traveled extensively across the continent of Africa. I've been on countless safaris, and I'm using this previous knowledge to best pack for this upcoming trip. I wanna make this as easy for you as possible. All the items, gear, and products I'm mentioning in this video are linked in the description below. If you find something in this video that you might wanna take on your upcoming trip, you can find it there. Many of these links will take you to my Amazon storefront where I have a Safari Essentials packing list. I also have some other products I'm not mentioning in this video that are linked there as well. You're probably wondering, well, why are those gonna be linked if you're not mentioning them? Well, take backpacks, for example. I'm not gonna be bringing three backpacks on this one trip. But I do have three backpack suggestions I would recommend taking that I've used, I've tried, I've tested that would be very suitable for this kind of itinerary. So before I start, I wanna give you some context for what I'm packing for. What will I be doing on this trip? I'm gonna be traveling through Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania for four full weeks. Now the beauty of this packing list is that if I was going to other wildlife destinations like Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe, you name it, I'd be packing pretty much the same things with me. It doesn't really make a difference where I'm going. I'm pretty much taking most of the same items with me. This itinerary I'm going on is very wildlife focused. We're gonna be doing countless game drives. We will be exploring national park environments such as the Serengeti in Tanzania. We're gonna be going great ape trekking in Uganda and Rwanda. So I'm making sure I have all the appropriate gear and clothing for these types of environments. We're going hiking into the rainforest. I also love wildlife photography and videography, so I'm gonna be bringing some camera gear. We're gonna try and sneak in some beach time in Zanzibar, so I'm thinking about that as well. And lastly, I'm gonna be making a lot of content for my channels to make more videos like the one you're watching right now. So if you're interested to hear the content creation tools I'm taking with me, stick around to hear about those. As you can see behind me, I have all of these items staged out, ready to go into my bags. This has been a work in progress for the past week. I've made a whole packing list, I've checked it twice, I've ordered certain items I wanna make sure I have with me, and it's finally time to get packing. All right, the moment has come, it's time to start packing. First and foremost, the first items I'm taking with me are the bags themselves. What am I gonna be packing everything in? Call me crazy, but I'm packing very light on this trip. I'm only gonna be taking a carry-on and a personal item. I know, you're probably like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be bringing a lot more than that. That's okay. Normally I would check a bag, but for this adventure in particular, I'm packing as light as possible. There are a few reasons for this. One, because I'm gonna be moving around a lot, perhaps more than the average safari goer. And there's one segment of our trip where we're gonna be taking a bush plane from the Serengeti to the city of Arusha in Tanzania. And the baggage allowance for this flight is very minimal. This is a very small bush plane. And they mentioned to me the baggage allowance and that I can't bring any luggage that has a hard shell. When I realized the baggage allowance for this flight, I took that as a challenge to see if I could pack as light as possible. That's why for this trip, I'm fitting everything into these two bags here. This is my favorite day pack. This is a Stubble & Co backpack. It's a water resistant bag and it's very comfortable to wear. I love it because the main compartment actually doesn't have a zipper, it's just one giant chute. The top folds up like this, which means if you don't have a lot of items, it can be like a lot more compact. Or if you wanna fill it up to the brim, you can open it up like this. And this is the duffel bag I'm gonna be taking. It's actually an office duffel bag for business trips. So it's not totally safari chic, but functionally it's perfect for what I need. It's got a lot of space in there, feels very good quality. And one of the main reasons why I decided to go with this bag is because it has a shoe compartment right here. So it keeps that separate from the other items in your bag. Just like that. So will all these items fit into these two bags? There's only one way to find out. The next category I'm covering are travel documents and finances. Things you must have with you, otherwise you're not going on safari. Starting with passport, because duh, you need to have a passport. The packing has begun everyone, it's starting to feel official. 
Next up, travel visas. I have these tourist visas that I applied for well in advance for Tanzania and Uganda. Now some of the countries I'm going to, you can get a visa upon arrival, but I wanted to get mine in advance because I just want to eliminate as many steps as possible when I arrive. I have an electronic copy of these, which is probably what I'm gonna end up using. That can work perfectly fine, but I have a hard copy just in case. It's going in the laptop sleeve. Yellow fever vaccine. As of the day I'm making this video, Uganda is the only country that currently requires a yellow fever vaccine to enter. The other countries I'm visiting, it's simply recommended. And that's because yellow fever is still prevalent in many of these regions. Now this is current information as of the day I'm posting this video. This could change with time. But once you get your yellow fever vaccine, it's valid for life. It used to be that you'd have to get a booster every 10 years, but now they've changed the policy where you only need it once and you're good to go for life. So I'm making sure I have that. Wallet, because you're gonna need money to travel. Inside my wallet, I have a credit card and an ATM card. Definitely recommend bringing an ATM card if you plan on withdrawing cash abroad. And that brings me to my next point, which is that you should bring some extra cash with you. Even if it's in your local currency, it's very good to have cash just in case. Now just realize before going on safari that tipping is pretty customary in the safari industry. Now to express your appreciation for your hospitality staff that help provide you with a wonderful experience, I do recommend bringing cash to tip. Now the best thing you could do is tip in the local currency in the destination you're traveling to. The next best thing you could do is tip in your foreign currency. It's always good to have cash with you no matter what the situation is. Just in case you're in a pinch, there's no ATMs around you, you have no other means to pay, it's always good to have some cash handy. And I do have some leftover Uganda currency from my last trip there. And lastly, I have my global entry card. This is only applicable to US citizens that are watching this video. This is a travel perk that I applied for, which essentially helps me bypass the custom step when I return to the United States. So I'm bringing that as well. Okay, it's now time to cover the category that most of you are interested in hearing about. Clothing and gear. What kind of clothing and gear am I gonna be taking along for this adventure? Let's start with footwear. I am bringing three different types of footwear for this trip. Collectively, these three pairs of shoes are gonna be covering all the bases. They're gonna be able to endure all types of terrain and environments. Starting with an open-toed shoe, I have these Chaco sandals I'm taking along. These are very, very versatile shoes and very comfortable to wear. I definitely recommend bringing something with an ankle strap so it stays on your foot. If you decide to be more casual while on game drives, you don't want something that could potentially fly off your foot. I'm also bringing what I'm calling my everything shoes. These are just traditional running sneakers. I'm gonna be wearing these nine times out of 10. These are gonna be great for everyday use. As you can see, these ones are a little bit worn out. This could be their last trip, but I've logged a lot of miles with them. You definitely wanna have an in-between sneaker that you can wear most of the time. And lastly, I have a very hardy pair of hiking boots. As I mentioned earlier in this video, we're gonna be going great ape trekking in Uganda and Rwanda. We're gonna be hiking in the dense rainforest and these are really wet climates. There's a lot of precipitation. I expect hiking through a lot of mud. When it comes to gorilla or chimpanzee trekking, everyone's experience is going to be different, but I'm just preparing for the gnarliest of gnarly. You wanna bring a shoe with you that's very durable, very strong, has some ankle support, something that if you sunk your foot into the mud, you wouldn't care if it just got smothered. These are cane boots and I use these a lot for hiking trips. As you can see, they're definitely the bulkiest item I'm taking on this adventure, which is why I'm gonna be actually wearing these on my foot when I'm in transit. These will not be fitting inside my bag. Not the most comfortable shoe to have while on an airplane, but we're gonna make it work. Footwear is just going to take up like 20% of my bag. I've accepted that. But luckily these Chacos pack down pretty well, as you can see. Here it goes. This is gonna be part of my airport outfit. Okay, it's so now time to go over layers. Layers are crucial when you're going on safari. There's a misconception that it's always gonna be really hot in Africa, and while it can get very hot, it can also get very cold. When you're going on wildlife experiences in places like the Serengeti, expect chilly mornings and hot afternoons. Early morning offers some of the best wildlife spotting opportunities, which is why when you're on safari schedule, you wake up really early. When you first wake up, you're gonna be cold. You're gonna to wanna to bundle up as much as possible, and as the day goes on, you're shedding layers. This is why I'm putting an extra emphasis on this part of the packing list. So what kind of layers am I taking with me? I'm bringing two rather thin sweaters that fit really snug on my figure. I probably could get away with just wearing one, but I kind of want to bring two for stylistic purposes. Bringing this dark green one and this khaki beige quarter zip that has this nice waffle weave texture. 
I'm also bringing this fleece vest. I got this on Amazon and honestly, I wear this more than anything else I own. I love wearing fleece on safari because it really cuts through the wind. Imagine yourself on an open air vehicle, the wind is hitting your face. You want something that will break the wind. When you put on fleece, you feel warm instantly. And I love having a vest on because it's a great in-between that keeps your core warm. I imagine wearing this a lot. This is a long sleeve quarter zip athletic shirt. This is from Vawari. I love this brand so much. What I love about this kind of garment is that the material has some amazing technology in it. If you feel cold, putting this on will make you feel warm. And somehow you won't get too hot in this either. So depending on where you're at, this can accommodate. And of course, I'm bringing a rain jacket with me. This is very important to have. I expect there to be a lot of rainfall while I'm there for a full month. As I mentioned, I'm trekking through rainforest settings where there's a lot of precipitation. And even if it's not actively raining, as I'm hiking through this thick vegetation, there's still a lot of moisture that's collected in this environment. So as you're walking through it, all that moisture will start collecting on you. I've been gorilla trekking before and I remember just being soaked afterwards. So you really want something that's really water repellent. I finally got myself a nice rain jacket, which I'm so excited about. This is a rain jacket from Columbia. How does it look? It fits me like a glove. It's super comfortable. The color is described as being burnt orange. As you probably noticed, most of the things I'm bringing are neutral in color. There's a reason that a safari aesthetic has neutral tones, and that's because bright colors can sometimes startle wildlife. You don't wanna stick out like a sore thumb. You wanna bring some neutral tones. This is probably as bright as I would recommend. I can't wait to wear this. There's a ton of pockets available. I'm ready. It can roll up just like this. If my hand was big enough, I could probably wrap my fingers around this. So I'm not actually bringing this Patagonia fleece sweater just because I feel I have enough already. But if I was packing a bigger bag, I would definitely be bringing this. Just wanted to show you guys because I absolutely love it. It's so warm, so snug. It feels like I'm getting a hug every single time I put it on. This is the kind of thing you wanna bring on a safari because it'll keep you warm around the neck. And as you can imagine, as the wind and breeze is hitting you when you're in an open air vehicle, this kind of material can offset that wind very well. And lastly, I wanna show you this fleece jacket I'm taking with me. I got this on Amazon and it's designed for outdoor and wildlife experiences, which is exactly what I'm going on. This is definitely the bulkiest and hardiest layer I'm bringing. It's got some weight to it because it is fleece, but the beauty of that is when you put it on, you feel that warmth and weight on you instantly. This is gonna be part of my airport outfit. So if you see me wearing this while in transit, you'll know where I'm going. Obviously layers take up a lot of space in your bag. So I'm expecting this to not leave a lot of room left over. Okay, so far so good. Airport outfit. All right, these are not like gonna be groundbreaking items. These are quite basic, but of course I'm bringing underwear and socks. I'm bringing four pairs of hiking socks. I'm also bringing some other pairs of short ankle socks. For this trip, I'm bringing seven pairs of underwear. That's enough to last a full week. I do plan on doing laundry at several of the game lodges that I'll be visiting. So I'm counting on that being available approximately once a week. Okay, I'm not actually just throwing stuff in my bag. I wanna make sure it's well organized. Pants. For this trip, I'm only bringing two pairs of pants. I am bringing the adventure pants for when I'm doing those rainforest treks. These are water resistant and very durable, very strong. These are for more heavy duty situations. I'm also bringing these Lululemon pants, which are the most versatile pants you can buy. I've had these for years and they're still in perfect shape. The material is such high quality. I'm gonna be wearing this in transit, so this is part of my airport outfit. I love this style because it's appropriate for all types of situations. It's casual, but it also could be like kind of a dressed up look if you want. When I'm wearing this in like a formal setting, no one looks at me and is like, wait, are those sweatpants? Because look, they're like better than sweatpants. These pants are from Lululemon and I'm not kidding, I've probably brought these on every single one of my trips, ever. So therefore they're coming with me. All right, these are the shirts I'm bringing with me. All of these shirts are from Vwari. Can you tell I'm kind of obsessed with that brand? They can be worn as athletic wear or formal t-shirts. This shirt, for example, is just great for everything. It's pretty basic, but it's so comfortable. This is the kind of shirt I'm gonna be wearing on my most active days. And to spruce it up a little bit more, I have two shirts with a collar on them. As you could probably tell, I'm pretty obsessed with green. It's just kind of my branded colors. They're neutral tones. They kind of have that safari look. 
Both of these shirts are Volaria as well. These are the ones I'm gonna be wearing when I wanna look a little bit nicer on camera. So they're coming with me as well. Shorts. So I'm probably bringing more pairs of shorts than I actually need. But for stylistic purposes, I wanna have that diversity. Lululemon shorts. Vowari shorts. Big surprise, more Vowari. But seriously though, these shorts are so versatile. There's a lining on the inside. So if I run out of underwear, I can just use this. They're so comfortable. They're so nice. And you know me, I love my green. I'm also bringing something with a khaki shade. I just got these shorts from a brand called Camel Crown on Amazon. This is the perfect kind of material you want on Safari because it's quick dry. I love that all these shorts I'm bringing are drawstring so that they can fit around any waist size. And I'm not gonna have to pack a heavy belt. Very, very lightweight and just another versatile piece of clothing. Okay, and lastly, a swimsuit. Okay, the good news is I've packed pretty much all of the clothing I'm taking with me and I still have some space in my duffel, which means I think I'm gonna be able to fit everything in, especially if I pack it down. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> As you can see, this is the most safari aesthetic thing I own. I got this from a brand called Khaki Fever on my travels in South Africa. Every time I bust it out, I know it's time for safari. I love that it's like a little bit worn, like these stains are well earned. This kind of shirt is built for safaris, of course I'm bringing this. What else can we fit in here? Let's see. Confirming that it can still close. And lastly, for clothing, I'm gonna be bringing some hats. Now, I recommend bringing a beanie or something that can cover your ears because I mentioned on those early mornings, you wanna have every part of your body covered. This is a Voari beanie. And then I'm also bringing some hats with the brim because for those hot sunny days, there's a lot of UV exposure. You wanna bring something that will cover your face. Better yet, something that will cover your ears. I am not someone who really likes the wide brimmed hats as much as I like ball caps, which is why I'm bringing two of these. And I've decided that this is part of my airport outfit. All right, now moving on to the next category of this packing list, travel gadgets. I wanna showcase some cool travel gadgets that I take with me on every single trip. Starting with this Vessel first aid kit. This is a very modern and sleek first aid kit. As you can see, it's got a unique cylinder shape. And I love the design of this because if you open it up, Inside, there's a bunch of little canisters. And each of these canisters contains different items you might need in a first aid situation. Inside this standard kit that I have, I've got outdoor essentials, tools, clean cut and cover, and first aid tape. What's cool about Vessel is that you can custom design any type of kit like this. You can get a large one that fits more tins, a smaller one if you'd like, and you can hand pick which of these tools you have in your kit. This is super handy to have and very lightweight. Overall, I just really like the design of it. You can find what you need really quickly. Rather than like a very confusing bag of first aid items and band-aid wrappers flying everywhere, you can also get interchangeable caps if you like. I just have the standard cap, but you could turn this into a flashlight or a carabiner. You can custom tailor this however you'd like. All right, some other gadgets I'm taking with me. I'm taking this portable rechargeable hand warmer. If you haven't considered bringing hand warmers on your safari, you might wanna think about bringing something like this. You will not be sorry that you have this on those game drives. Like I said, those early mornings can be quite chilly and your hands will be the coldest part of your body. If you're doing something like wildlife photography, you're gonna want nimble fingers to hit that shutter button. Having this warm in your hand is so nice to have. All right, I'm also gonna be bringing an air tag because I always have peace of mind knowing I can track my items, especially when in transit. If you have a checked bag, I definitely recommend putting an air tag in it. This will help you locate your bag no matter where it is in the world from your phone. It's very, very easy to install and connect instantly to your device. As you can see, this air tag is inside kind of a cool card holder. So the reason for this is that this shape can fit and slip into any wallet. So if you want to air tag your wallet, you can get this accessory and it'll slip right into your wallet. I'm also going to be bringing a headlamp on this trip because there are many situations when at night I'm hearing noises and I'm like, what is that? This is a Petzl headlight. I use this for all sorts of backcountry trips and it's coming with me on this one. Look at all the different settings it has. Definitely recommend bringing a portable charger with you. Electricity can sometimes be a little bit limited depending on where you're going. On this trip in particular, we're gonna be in some very immersive stays out in the remote wilderness that are solar powered, which means there's no electricity available at night. So unless you plan on charging your items throughout the day, and assuming it's a sunny day at all, it's always nice to have a backup portable charger with you. 
So I got this lightweight charger from Amazon, which I'm excited about because it's a lot smaller than the ones I've been traveling with previously. It tells you the exact percentage charge that's remaining on the screen here. Plus there's a ton of different adapters to charge different devices. I also have this little mini cord that attaches and just kind of stays on this 24 seven. So that way there's not a long tangled cord whenever I need to charge my phone. I'm also gonna be bringing some noise canceling AirPods. I definitely recommend bringing these just for the earplug and noise cancellation effect. If you're in transit, especially on those long haul flights, these are so nice at just calming the environment and putting you in your own little world. And look, they're so small. Now this brings me to another cool gadget I'm taking on this trip. This is an AirFly Pro. So what this device does is that it connects your AirPods to the in-flight entertainment system. You know those movie players where you're watching the screen on the seat in front of you? Unless you have an actual headphone jack, there's no way to listen to the audio coming from that entertainment system. Most of us nowadays are traveling with Bluetooth devices that can't connect to these systems, such as AirPods. And that's where AirFly comes in. You connect this device and allows you to Bluetooth connect to the entertainment system. This is gonna be a game changer item to have with me on those long flights. I'm so excited to use my own headphones for that. You don't have to get the cheap ones from the airline attendants. I also wanna show you my really cool water bottle. This is a Lark Purvis water bottle, which is a self-cleaning water bottle. If you've been watching my content over the years, you would know that this is always attached to me at the hip. Definitely my favorite water bottle by far. And it's got some really cool technology behind it. Let me show you. So this is the Pure Vis cap, and how it works is you press this button at the top, which then illuminates a UVC light. Do you see the blue light pulsing right there? The light that's shining inside of this bottle is now killing 99% of the bacteria contained in the bottle. This helps keep the bottle clean and eliminate things like odors. The cycle goes off automatically every two hours. The battery lasts a very long time. Now this bottle also has an interchangeable filter straw. Now the Pure Vis cap that I just explained doesn't necessarily purify the water. It's mostly for cleaning the bottle. But if you wanna add a layer of protection, I have this filter straw, which is super nice as well. Together, this is the ultimate water purification combo. Can you believe this is what the bottle looks like after two years? It's still in perfect shape. And on the filter straw, there's a nice carabiner attachment. Oh, speaking of water, I've been talking for a long time. Moving on to the next category, miscellaneous items. These are other travel essentials I wanna make sure I'm bringing with me. Starting with sunscreen, sun exposure in East Africa is very real. I'm bringing a little bit of hand sanitizer because traveling can be germy sometimes. This is a quick dry hand sanitizer. Look dry, bringing that. Sunglasses with UV protection, of course, in a hard shelled case. I'm bringing some dry snacks. Always have emergency food with you just in case. I've got RX bar and cliff bars. And I'm gonna be bringing my wildlife guidebook. This is a little pocket guidebook. Look how much information is packed in this thing. This is perfect for when you see a random animal and you're like, what is that? You can use this to help you identify that mystery creature. There's tons of great visuals and great descriptions of all these animals. I love studying this in my downtime. I'm also bringing one of my favorite books. This is definitely something I recommend reading if you plan to go visit the gorillas of Uganda or Rwanda. This is a memoir written by two researchers that worked there in the early 70s. And they have a lot of wild stories to tell for being some of the earliest gorilla researchers in the world. I'm gonna be using this for reference and a lot of content. Let's have a quick chat about insect repellent. So bugs, anywhere where you're going where there's wildlife, there's gonna be bugs. It's inevitable. The intensity varies depending on what time of year it is and where exactly you're going, but always expect bugs. So for general insect repellent, I'm bringing these deep wood off wipes. They come in small little packets like this. I'm also bringing this small repel stick. It kind of looks like a glue stick, but don't worry, it's not sticky. And lastly, I'm bringing this little mosquito net. This is something I've never used before that I'm gonna try on this trip, but I figured it's so light and so compact, like why not bring it? It goes over your face like this, and it's meant to be for when you're wearing a hat so it can kind of keep the net out of your face. I feel a little bit silly wearing this, and I don't plan on wearing it a lot, but who knows, maybe this will turn into my new favorite thing. What do you think? It's kind of a style choice, isn't it? You know what I just realized this would be great for? 
is if you're stationed somewhere with your camera gear and you're trying to get the shot, this might be the moment you use that. Cool. Something you're gonna be really happy you take with you would be lens wipes. When you're on safari, you're in these open air vehicles and dust will collect on you and your items. So if you wear glasses or sunglasses or you wanna keep your camera lenses clean, these are super handy. These are small little packets and I'm bringing a ton of them with me. Cannot recommend these enough. Now moving on to electronics. So this includes camera gear and content creation tools. Let's take a seventh inning stretch. I am gonna be bringing my laptop on this trip. I don't really wanna bring this valuable item, but because I'm gonna be editing on the road, working while I'm abroad, I have to bring this with me. But good thing there's a laptop sleeve. Because I'm bringing a laptop, I need to bring the laptop charger. It's starting to get heavy. I'm also bringing a SanDisk hard drive. This is so I can back up all of my photos and videos. I'm gonna be taking a ton of content, so I want something to back this all up on. Okay, everyone, I'm now gonna give you a closer look at the camera gear and content creation tools I'm bringing for this trip. Starting, of course, with my primary camera. This is my Sony a7 Mark III. This camera has never let me down. It's what I film my highest quality footage on. I've used this camera on Safari multiple times, Love the sharp image quality. It's produced some of my most beloved wildlife photos and videos. I'm also taking this Rode VideoMic Pro to elevate my audio recording. This mic is great for recording nature ambiances. There are several adjustable features right on this mic and it props onto my Sony camera just like this. Of course, I have a lens cap to keep my lens protected from dust. This is what I call my wildlife lens. This is a Sony Alpha 70 to 350 millimeter super telephoto APS-C lens. That's a lot of words. I use this for all the wildlife close-ups. This little photo and tech remote is what I use to take photos from when I'm far away from my camera. So if I've set up the camera at a distance on a tripod or something, I can use this remote control to hit the shutter button. This is great when you have to be your own photographer. I'm bringing two SanDisk memory cards. Each one has 128 gigabytes, which will definitely fill up quickly on a trip like this. I protect these memory cards with my life when I start getting the money shots. I've got this plastic case to keep it protected when it's not in the camera. I'm also bringing this uni adapter, which connects the memory card to my computer. This is a USB-C plugin, which is what most modern Apple products take nowadays. I'm also bringing this lightning SD card reader, which connects the memory card to my phone. This is so helpful when you just wanna save a few photos onto your device. You plug it in and you can select which photos you wanna import right onto your camera roll. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I'm bringing a lot of lens wipes to keep my lenses crystal clear, have to maintain and preserve the high quality glass as best as possible. I'll be bringing two camera batteries for this trip. I love charging them together on this dual charger. I like it because this light tells you if it's fully charged or not. And I'm gonna be packing all this camera gear into my camera bag. In this case, I have a Hollyland wireless mic set. This is what I'm recording audio on when shooting on my actual phone. In fact, the audio you're listening to at this very moment is being recorded on this mic. You can see me holding these little microphones in my Instagram videos and whatnot. You essentially talk into this and the signal gets sent to this, which is connected to your phone. It comes in a well-organized case like this, which charges all the mics. There are two transmitters and one receiver, so you could hook this up to two individuals if you wanted for an interview or something. I'm also bringing this little gimbal, which works for smartphones. This is the DJI Osmo SE gimbal. It's super lightweight and compact. I use this to stabilize my footage, especially when on bumpy safari vehicles. You know me, I'm excited to vlog this trip, so it will definitely come in handy. The phone clips onto this part here, then you click this button and like magic, the phone is balanced and stabilized. Lastly, I have my tripod. This is an Elite Hood tripod. I'm bringing this one because it's tall, but yet can be packed down pretty short. I'm also bringing this because I can mount both my phone and camera to it. Aside from camera gear, I wanna show you a few more electronics I'm bringing. One is this international power adapter. This one adapter can work in 150 countries, believe it or not. I use this on every trip, it really is a travel essential. As you can see, there are some switches where you can slide out the desired plug you need. There are four USB charging ports, so you can charge multiple things at once. And on the back side, there's also a bunch of different plug-in options if you wanna charge your items the traditional way. Before I wrap up the electronics section of this packing list, I wanna mention a virtual item I'm packing with me for this trip. I'm actually bringing some pre-downloaded eSIMs from Airlo. This allows me to stay connected to cellular data while abroad. 
This app is so simple to use. You choose your destination, your package plan, and hit install. Then when you arrive at your destination, you can connect to cellular data. This is game-changing technology when it comes to travel. If you're interested to learn more, I have a video where I explain eSIMs and how to install them on my channel. I also have a link in the description of this video to get you started. I hope this helps in getting you connected quickly, efficiently, and affordably. We're on the last category. This is toiletries. I'm gonna breeze through this section because you're probably not interested in every single small toiletry I'm bringing, but I will pause and explain a few of the most universal ones that you might wanna consider bringing as well. Got my little toiletry bag here. Inside we are putting travel size toothpaste, contact case, cause I wear contacts, contact solution, spare contacts. I'm putting these liquids in a plastic bag so it doesn't leak everywhere. Will my voice last this whole video? I've been talking for quite a while. Q-tips, comb, face wipes, because remember what I said about dust. You'll be so thankful you brought these. Hair gel, little tissue packets. These are very handy to always have with you. I'm bringing like a ton of these. Retainer, floss. I'm bringing an electronic razor for my face. This is my brawn razor, love this thing. Electric toothbrush. This is a Surrey toothbrush, which is a brand out of the UK. And I love this thing, it's perfect for travel. It comes in its own little case like this which keeps the brush itself very well protected. This prevents the bristles from getting pressed down or contaminated. There's a little UVC light here as well, which helps disinfect the bristles. And it does not have to be charged very frequently. The battery lasts a while. It has a very slim design. Can fit into any pack. Love that snap. Okay. I am bringing masks for this trip. Not just because I'm gonna be in some germy environments, but because it's a requirement to have for gorilla trekking. Many diseases can be spread from human to great ape, which is why it is mandatory you have these with you. So I'm bringing these KN95 masks. I don't know if this counts as toiletry, but I'm bringing a little sack for my dirty laundry so it keeps separate from my clean clothes in my bag. Deodorant, nail clippers. I'm bringing some chapstick. You're gonna want this for dry environments. This is from the brand Hurrah, which I love. And believe it or not, it's from my hometown in Montana. Mmm, so soft. I don't know if I'm gonna use this or not, but I'm bringing it just in case. This is some dry laundry soap. Believe it or not, this dry sheet is actually soap. You break off a little piece, you put in some water, and it'll turn into laundry soap. Such a great travel hack. Drugs. For the record, I'm not promoting drugs. This is a gray little container my sister actually got me, which I love. It keeps your drugs very well organized and labeled. Comes with a bunch of little stickers. You can design this however you want. As far as drugs go, I'm bringing the basics. Ibuprofen, some Benadryl, some Imodium, just in case I get the runs. Just the basics that every traveler should have in their bag with them. The last thing I'm bringing with me is this little lock. It's always nice to have a lock with you just in case. This one's a little flimsy and not very hardcore, but if I ever need to put something in a locker or whatnot, I like to have this with me. <sighs> okay, the moment of truth, you guys. I'm going to zip up my bags, see if everything fits. I'm also going to put on my airport outfit and we're gonna do a mock run. We're gonna pretend like it's time to leave the house. We're going on safari. Before, after, time to get the bags. Okay, not too heavy, not too bad. Please close, please close, I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> Voila! And we did it! It all fit! I still have to fit my camera, of course, because I'm using it right now, but there is space in my backpack to fit it. I am so glad that worked. You guys, we're ready for safari. Now I do plan on accumulating some items while I'm over there. So I'm probably gonna check a bag on the way home, but for the majority of the trip, this is what I'm bringing. Thank you so much for watching this video and packing with me. I hope this video was helpful to you. Again, if you're interested in any of the items I mentioned in this video, you can find links for them in the description below. If you wanna watch more Safari Insight videos or join me for this month long safari trip, cause I'm gonna be vlogging the entire experience, don't forget to hit subscribe. What kind of videos would you like me to make next? If you have any ideas, drop a comment. I would love to hear your feedback. Okay, it's time to go on safari. Safe travels.